Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the heat map. Now, the heat map visual is a great visual if you're trying to be able to visualize the density or the frequency of values in certain areas on a map. Now, the heat map does use the Bing Maps REST services. So that, what that tells you is it's going to be connected to Bing Maps. It also tells you you do need to have an internet connection for it to be able to map out data that you're going to be using. So if you're not connected to the internet, then of course you will not be able to connect to those Bing Maps REST API services or REST services. You also do have the ability to actually animate your data across a map as well. So you can actually look at the heat map over time or over some kind of categorical data as well. That's one thing to keep in mind is just because you're going to be animating it does not mean that it necessarily has to be over time. You could actually put in categorical data, for example, and it would animate it through the alphabet, for example, or through numeric data. It'll uh, go 1 through 3 or 1 through 10, 10 or whatever you need to do. You can animate the data through other data types as well. It does not have to be a date time. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use the heat map inside of our own example inside the Power BI desktop. All right, so for this example, we're going to be pulling in some credit data. And basically, this is going to be complaints that customers have had about credit cards, about student loans. There's all kinds of complaint data. And we're going to be pulling this in and being able to visualize where these complaints are occurring on a map. So we're going to start by going up to the Get Data section here. We'll say we want to get data from Excel. And we're going to be looking at this customer complaints data right here. We'll hit Open. And once we load this data in, we're going to be going ahead and pull in the one here called complaints. By the way, before I get this out to you, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these other two spreadsheets or this other the table and spreadsheet. We're just going to have complaints only. And we'll hit load. All right, so I'm going to pull this data, the complaints data. It's about a month and a half of data that I'm going to pull in here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it into a map. Now you can go look at the data here yourself if you'd like. If you go look underneath the data section, you can see all this credit card complaint data that's been brought through all sorts of different kinds of complaints and where they're occurring. You can see uh, the actual latitude and longitude, the zip code in here as well. And we're going to use both the zip code and the latitude and longitude for this example. So here's what we'll do. We'll go back over to the report view. We're going to import a new custom visual from the store. So I'll select custom visuals from store here. And then the visual that we're going to pull back is going to be the heat map. So we can do a little search up top here. We can type in just the word heat if you want to. And you can see all the ones that come back that have heat map capabilities. There's a table heat map. The globe map also has heat map capabilities. And then on the bottom one, you can see this one's a little bit better rated than the globe map. But this one gives you the ability to actually do data points on a heat map as well. So we'll hit add here to get the heat map. Add it into our visualization pane and hit OK. We're going to go ahead and add that heat map into our visual section here. And yeah, let's make it take up a pretty good section of the screen here. Tell you what, let's make it about half. And what I'd like to do is we're going to start by bringing in the different type of location that we want. So you have to tell it whether it's a state or a country or in our case a zip code. We're going to have to map out that zip code to the location ID here. So you'll go ahead and select that. And once you select that, then you can also tell it, you'll notice it doesn't map anything immediately. But you can also then tell it the latitude and longitude of those two values of the zip codes here. So I'm going to bring in the latitude and longitude. And you'll see it'll bring those into our map. And as soon as we kind of shift our map a little bit, you can see it looks like it's actually started to build out our map, map for us here. And it's done a pretty good job. You can see where all the values are lying out inside of our data set. Quite a bit of northeastern complaints, some in the southeast, some in Texas, some in the west coast, some in Washington. And so what we want to do, though, is we want to be able to actually do a count of all the complaints. So if we want to count of all the complaints, I can see there's this complaint ID. And if I select that complaint ID and go look underneath the modeling section, you can see that up here on the top, the default summarization is for it to do a count of that ID. And that's actually already what I wanted to do. So I'm going to take the complaint ID, drop it under the value section. You'll see it adjust the chart a little bit because we're seeing a count of all the complaints by zip code now, not just a mapping of all the zip codes. All right, you can also do, there's an option down here in the grouping section. If you add something to group, say for example, I want to group by product, you'll notice it doesn't actually do anything initially. There's no initial change that you see that's made to the, the visual. Basically what grouping allows you to do is kind of group out or filter certain values within inside of the, the map itself. So I'll show you what that looks like here uh, next. So if we wanted to be able to work a little bit with that grouping, what you can do is you can go under the format paintbrush here. So in the middle of the design surface or on the right-hand side, I should say, you can select the paintbrush, the format paintbrush, and you'll see there's a section here devoted to group. And if you select group, you'll see here that you have all the different categories of products that you can now tell it that you want to include or exclude from the visual. So for example, let's say for example, I didn't want to see the credit card or 
Uh, oh, let's do this one. Credit reporting or credit recovery, I think it is, or repair. I can uncheck that one, and you'll notice it now takes that out of the map. Those values are not included. It's grouped by everything else except for the credit reporting there. So you have some flexibility. You can kind of turn on or turn off certain values. Some of this you could also accomplish by doing simple filters on the report, or maybe even you wanted to do something like bring in another chart. Maybe I bring in a column chart here, for example, and tell it that I want to see the number of credit card complaints by the product. And you can kind of do some things like this if I did a not 100% chart, but the chart more like this. And you can do some filtering like this. And then, of course, cross highlighting does occur where you can select values here and see how it impacts the other chart. Okay. So that's kind of how you can play around with the grouping. That's what the grouping allows you to do is where you can actually take certain values and uh, perhaps make it where some of them are not shown on this particular visual. All right. Now, the other thing that we can do if we go back over to the field list here, and we take out product from the group. Let's kill product from the group here. And let's add in something like the date received. And what this will allow us to do by doing something like this is we can actually animate this chart now. We could actually have animated it earlier as well. But the date received makes for a better type of animation. So if we drop something like date received in here and go over to the format paintbrush and go down to animation, we can actually turn on the animation by hitting play. And you'll see over time that each of the values change. Now, there's some things that you'll see here that immediately kind of are confusing. It looks like there's no data here, but that has to do with the scale that's being shown right now. So we'll actually work on that here in a moment. You can also make it so that the playing of the axes repeats. So if I turn on the repeat option, you'll see whenever it gets to the end of the values, it'll actually start over again. And you're seeing, if you look at where my mouse is on the top here, you can see it says animate, and it's showing you the value that it's animating right now. So it's showing August 16th, August 17th, August 18th, and it's going to continue to animate. You can tell it how fast you want that animation to occur. So right now, the freezing right here, what that basically says is it's going to be on each one of those values for one second. You could make it less than a second if you wanted to. So here I'm kind of making it even faster to go through each of the values. You can make it something like two seconds if you wanted to. But basically, that's how long it's going to spend on each one of the values. I'm going to leave it at one. The option here below it called morphing is a little bit of the interaction that you'll see whenever it transitions from one value to another how it's going to, to transition. And I'm going to show you this once we change some of the settings with our scale so it's a little easier to see. I'll also show you again what morphing does in a bit. What pause allows you to do is actually pause the animation that you see here. So if we hit pause, that'll pause it on a particular date, and we can see those values to that point. Okay, so what pause, what pause allows you to do is actually pause the values that you see here, prevent it from continuing to go through. All right, I'm going to turn the uh, pause off, let it keep going. All right, so that's animation. Now, the animation's really neat, but again, you'll notice that the scale is not really helpful here. We're not able to really see what's going on very well with our data. So because of that, what we might want to do is actually go affect some of the other properties in here, like the render settings and uh, maybe things like the legend. So let's take a look at the other settings that we have. If we go up to the top section here, you'll see there is obviously a section here devoted to the legend. That's the legend that you see up on the top, all the way from the animate section here to the far right where you see the scale. If you expand that, you can tell it where do you want to see the position of the, the, the values here, the legend. So you can either see it at the top or the bottom. Okay, so your choice, which wherever you'd prefer to see it. And I would, uh, at least in this case, definitely recommend upping the uh, size here, the font a little bit, so it's a little easier to read. Maybe something like 17 point font would make it a lot easier to read. Okay, now you can also do some things like this. If you don't want to see the color section here, the scale of the colors, you can turn that off. And you can see that disappears. Or you can also turn off the detail section, which is what you see on the left-hand side when it's animating. So I can turn off that, and then that disappears, and no one sees the animation at what point it is in the animation. Now, that's actually pretty helpful to have, because that way you know what day you're looking at. So I'm going to leave that on. Underneath the renderer section, this is where you can actually change the type of map. Right now it's set to a contour, but you could also change it from contour to heat. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. I'm going to leave that alone for now. You can also change things like the radius. Like I would actually recommend updating some things like the radius as well as the measure in this case. The opacity is where you can actually change how transparent it is. But before I make some of these changes, let's actually affect the, uh, make some changes to the measure section here because this is what's causing the scale issues where we're not seeing any values on our map. If we wanted to, we can change right now this from sum, where it's summing up all the values that we have in our data set, where we can see that there's this many complaints where I would actually change it to something like manual. You can see there's some other aggregates in here as well. I'm going to change it to manual, though. And as I change it to manual, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that I want to see the maximum value in here to be something like 20, meaning that's the maximum number of complaints, basically, that I would see per day. And you can see as I do that, this is much easier to view chart. You're actually seeing, or map, I should say, 
you're actually seeing values return back here each day. The animations are starting to make a little bit more sense. And now that we've made those changes, we'll actually be able to make some changes with the other properties and notice them. So one, for example, the, the radius, if the radius has to do with how large a bubble it's gonna put on each of these latitude longitudes that we've placed in here. So we could do something like bump that up to like 40 and you'll see it'll bump that up a little bit. And there you go, it settles itself down after a second. You could also do something like this, maybe the opacity you want to increase or decrease, that's again how transparent it is. So you can make this something like 100% if you wanted to, and then it's not really transparent at all. So you're not really seeing through those values at all. There are different levels, that's why you're seeing different colors, but you'll notice that they're not transparent at all. I might want to make this something like, uh, I like the 0.75 or maybe 0.85 as the transparency. I think either of those would be fine. All right. So that's the contour. We're going to leave it on contour for a little bit because there are some specific contour sec uh, settings right here. You can see contour map. If you expand contour map, you can see that there are maximum levels. There's different levels that you can set. Right now, the max level is set to 5. What this is referring to is the section down here in the bottom where you see 0 to 6, 6 to 10, 10 to 14, 14 to 18, 18 to 20. That has to do with the different max levels that you see here. So you can actually adjust that to maybe have four levels if you wanted to. You could make it have one level if you wanted to, and then you're only going to ever see one color appear here because it's from 10 to 20, and it's actually excluding a lot of values here. Probably the five levels is fine, but you can adjust those to whatever you prefer. You can also change the color. So if you didn't like the color, you can come in here and adjust the color to maybe something like a red if you wanted to. I actually like the blue. I'm going to revert that back. And then you can also be much more specific with these ranges if you wanted to. So right now, the ranges are set just based on how it's computed the values from our max that we had earlier under the render section. So we set the max to 20, so it's building these different levels based on that 20. You can be more specific, though. Underneath the specify section here, you can tell it what ranges you want for each of these values. So the dark blue right now, you can set to be, right now it's the 90 percentile. Uh, you can really kind of adjust these to however you would like to bring them back for each of the different ranges that you see below. And as you adjust the max range, if I make this 2, you'll notice there should be only two ranges that you can specify here. All right, so that's what you have, kind of have the ability. I'm not going to bother changing these values. I, I like the way that it's brought them back now, but wanted to show you what that looks like. So that's the specific section that you have on the contour map. Now, if you go back to the renderer, you can also change this now to a heat map. And when you change this to a heat map, it looks more like a traditional heat map here, almost like a weather map a little bit. And you can, of course, change the same settings that we had earlier, but I kind of like how we've adjusted those now, so I'm going to leave those alone. And then you'll also see that there's specific heat map settings whenever you change the renderer to a heat map. So if I expand the heat map here, you can change the different color ranges that we have right now. And you can see how it's bringing those back. You can change the colors themselves, and you can change the percent of the uh, values, uh, how, they, how they appear here. So you have the flexibility to adjust that a bit if you desire to. All right, so that's kind of nice. That, that capability is built in to the map itself. We talked about the group section. We talked about the animate section. We haven't talked about the map section yet. Underneath the map section here, you can actually adjust the, the, the languages that are being used. So if I wanted to see this in something like Danish, I can switch the, the map names, uh, the values, and you can actually see that it would translate the states and the country names based on the selection of the language. The default, of course, is English. You can also turn off and turn on some of the other settings that you see here, like the cache settings. So the cache settings, what this allows it to do is whenever you have this turned on, if you were to close and reopen, it's kind of cached the results so it doesn't have to rebuild that cache of all the data points that you have on this particular map. Because this map can handle quite a few data points. It can handle uh, ten, tens of thousands of data points. You might want to leave that on because it does save you a lot of time whenever it's trying to re-render the map. This is the zoom capabilities. So you can see here you can zoom in and zoom out by using your cursor. If you wanted to, you can turn that capability off. So I'm kind of zooming in certain areas of the map. If you don't like that capability or if you just don't want your users to have that capability, you can turn that off here. And then the zooming is not available. As much as I want to zoom right now, it's not going to let me do it. And then you can also turn off the panning. Panning is kind of like what you see here, where I grab the port of the map and then kind of shift around. If you don't want them to be able to do that, you can turn off pan, and then they can't do that either. So I'm trying to grab here and move. It does not allow me to do that. So that's really just kind of more capabilities that you can turn off. If you don't want your users to have that flexibility, you can turn that off underneath the map section. All right, so that's really it for this one. There's a lot of little settings in here that are nice. The animate part is pretty interesting as well. I like that as well. But again, you have things like cross-highlighting that you can do as well. As I, as I select an item here, I'm looking at just student loans now, or if I just want to look at the credit reporting and credit repair, I can just look at that particular category. I should also note this is an interesting chart from this perspective. If I went underneath the format section and selected edit interactions, you'll notice here that you can do either a filter, 
a cross highlight or turn off the filter altogether. So what I mean by that, if you're not really familiar with this edit interactions, as you select a value here, what this does is it actually highlights the portion of the values that you would want to see. So it's highlighting rather than filtering. If I hit the filter option, that means it's going to outright filter to only the values that we have selected. So it's a little bit different interaction than you maybe you might be used to, um, but it's nice that you have that capability built in here for this particular map. It's a good map. I, I enjoy it. I like it. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it as well. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I look forward to showing you our next video in our next module.